Jean Liu is one of the most powerful women in tech. She's the president of DD Chujing. The company operates one of the world's biggest ride hailing services, completing up to 30 million rides per day. That's about 10 million more than Uber. DD is also the world's second most valuable startup with a lofty $56 billion valuation. But Didi's valuation has been called into question following Uber's disastrous IPO. Didi's shares are said to be trading privately 40% lower than their peak. Investors are starting to doubt if car hailing companies can ever turn a profit. This is how Jean Liu took on Uber and made Didi one of the most high profile companies in China. Liu was born into a prominent family in Beijing in 1978. Her father is a Chinese tech icon, Liu Chuanzhu, the founder of Lenovo. Jean Liu strikes people as a type A personality. I think part of it does come from the fact that her father is one of the most famous people in China and she's been trying to make a name for herself. Liu majored in computer sciences at Harvard and spent 12 years managing Asia investments at Goldman Sachs. In July 2014, she joined the then two-year-old startup Didi, aiming to help solve China's massive traffic problems. Right after I joined Didi, there's this woman coder coming to my office saying, I want to resign. Um, asked her why, and she said, I got pregnant. I said, you know, you can still work here if you get pregnant. She said, no, it's the commute that's killing me. And, you know, she was spending three hours switching between buses and subways every day. There are many, many people like that in China, 800 million Chinese that rise 1.4 billion times every day. Liu brought her financial expertise to Didi. She helped the company raise billions of dollars to compete against Kuadi, its largest local rival, and later brokered a merger with them. Months after the completion of the deal, Liu was diagnosed with breast cancer. She survived and returned to work to face one of the biggest battles of her career. Didi was facing its strongest competitor ever, Uber, which was already big in the US and starting to expand globally. Uber came when we were three years old and the war test, the money they brought in was bigger than our market cap. So we were scared for a moment and there was a big decision whether we give in or not. Didi didn't give in, instead, Liu and her company fought an all-out battle against Uber. The two companies spent billions discounting rides and recruiting drivers in an attempt to crush one another. Gaining market share turned into a question of who had more money to burn. First of all, we worked really hard. You know, the product team stay in the office, you know, for three months. They sleep in the office and we roll out four product lines after Uber came in. Uh, and secondly, we think we understand the market more. For example, many of China's cities restrict the use and ownership of private cars as a way to manage traffic and pollution. So Didi focused on taxi hailing, but Uber didn't seem to understand that. Didi also had the support of China's two mobile payments giants, Alipay and WeChat Pay. They helped smooth transactions and also back Didi subsidizing its drivers. A year later, both Didi and Uber realized that they had to stop the costly war and concentrate on building their businesses. In August 2016, Didi bought Uber China after receiving a billion dollars of funding from Apple, a deal largely brokered by Jean Liu. Uber also acquired a small stake in Didi, retreating from the Chinese market. Since then, Didi started to dominate the domestic market. Jin Liu was instrumental in brokering the Apple deal. When she met Tim Cook, she was saying that Didi's logo is an orange and Apple being another fruit company, they were bound to do great things together. 22 days later, um, they announced that Apple was investing $1 billion into Didi. While Didi triumphed over Uber in China, they soon began competing globally. Didi has entered markets in Latin America, Australia and Japan. It now completes an average 4 million rides a day outside of China. It also launched proxy wars against Uber through investments in many of its international competitors, such as Grab, Uber's biggest competitor in Southeast Asia, and Lyft, the main Uber rival in the US. Didi and Uber have a pretty interesting relationship. After the merger, they did have this short period of uh, truce, and they were observers on each other's boards, but that has come to a halt right now. Didi did form uh, strategic alliances with Grab, Lyft, but it hasn't been working as closely as people envisioned. And just like Uber, 
Didi has ambitions beyond ride hailing. It's venturing into on-demand food delivery, bike and e-bike sharing, smart city solutions, driverless cars and the lucrative car financing business that Jin Liu helped to build. But those ambitions may be kept in check by a year-long company overhaul triggered by the alleged murder of two female passengers. The company's safety record was thrown into the spotlight as thousands of users publicly deleted the app. Regulators cracked down on the type of drivers and cars allowed on Didi's carpooling service Hitch. It was a huge setback for Didi. At the time, it had to halt its carpooling service. It was a very lucrative business for the company, and after that, it went through a series of revamps, trying to step up its security measures. They finally resumed that service last year. Despite Liu's success with the company, helping grow it into a massive startup with about 13,000 staff, there remain serious questions about the business. The company is said to have lost $1.6 billion in 2018. Investors are doubting if it can ever turn a profit. It faces stringent regulatory crackdowns and competition from regional operators, even after muscling Uber out of China. The outbreak of coronavirus in China could also dampen Didi's prospects, as the government has imposed travel restrictions between many cities, and people are traveling a lot less within cities. It's another make or break year for Didi, and a lot of Jin Liu's legacy depends on whether she can prove that Didi can be a profitable company in the long run.